Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to the adventurous Vaughn Manor and another fantastic episode of my 100 Favorite Books Project. My 100 Favorite Books Project. I came up with a list of my 100 favorite books. I made a video about it. I'll link it down below. And what I'll do in these fantastic episodes is I will take a book from that list. I'll try to find the best edition I can of that book, at least the best edition for me, and I'll explain why that is. And then I'll get rid of any other editions I might have of that book lying around. That's the way it's supposed to work anyway. It doesn't really work that way in practice, but yeah, I've got a couple books to talk about today. They're both Lost World Adventures. Lost World Adventures, which is why I'm in my adventure gear. And I've got my partner in adventure back there, Roger, who's going to try to hog the spotlight as usual, like he always does. But that's okay. Now, it is very adventurous today, so we're going to be actually talking about two books today instead of just one. Lost World Adventures today. Yes, the Lost World genre used to be very popular back when there seemed to be room for Lost Worlds. There's not so much blank space on the map anymore to fill with imaginary worlds, but there was a time when there was just Lost Worlds all over the place. And one of the writers I'm going to be talking about today made his name with that kind of adventure fiction, and that would be H. Ryder Haggard, who created the Alan Quartermain series of novels and a bunch of other... He wrote a bunch of other books as well. The same can be said of this next author, who was famous for one creation, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and his creation, Sherlock Holmes, but he wrote a lot of other stuff besides. He, he wrote so many books, that guy. And he did write A Lost World Adventure. So the two books I'm going to be talking about today, the first one is She by H. Ryder Haggard, which was written in 1887, or published in 1887, and The Lost World by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, which was published in 1912. These are both two of my favorite books of all time. I love these books. I like classic adventure anyway. And these are just classics of the genre. They're classics of classic adventure. They're a lot of fun, these books. Both of these books are a lot of fun. Of course, you have to remember that both of these books were written over 100 years ago by two guys that were, like, really pro-empire. Yay, imperialism! Well, that doesn't fly so much anymore. But back in the day, I mean, like I said, these are old books, man. Attitudes have changed, thankfully. Thankfully, So you're going to find a bunch of that stuff in these books. I feel like that kind of goes without saying, but I sort of feel like I should say so anyway. Because I have seen reviews of these books where people are like, Oh my goodness, the xenophobia! I can't believe... It. Yes, yes, they're old books from over a hundred years... Of course, but... Yeah, it should go without saying that that kind of thing can be found in these books. Which is unfortunate, but you know what? The world is what it is, and it was what it was. So, they are still a lot of fun, these books. And they are classics of the genre. And they are kind of snapshots of the period, of the periods in which they were written. What people found adventurous, what people liked to read, the attitudes of the day, the accepted attitudes of the day. And did these books break away from those attitudes at all? Did they? Well, let's, let's find out as we talk about them. The first one we are going to be talking about is she. So there were not too many really fancy pants editions of she to choose from. So the edition I did choose was the easy choice because it is beautiful. And that is this edition by the Easton Press this edition of She by H. Ryder Haggard from the Easton Press is beautifully, uh, beautifully bound. It's just, it's just so well done, this edition. And happily, this edition, even though I did not buy it new, still has its little collector's note here. 
about the masterpieces of science fiction, which is the line that this is from. And it is just a beautifully done edition. There's the title page right there. That's not exactly how I picture she, Aisha, the queen who must be obeyed. But, you know, it's nice. And beautiful title page on it. Uh, really nicely done, as usual. There are no illustrations in the volume, but it's a very, it's a very beautiful volume. And it, like I said, it's, it's gorgeously done and it will last forever with care. And I take very good care of my books. So yeah, this one will be around a lot longer than I will. And I particularly like the cover design. The Eastern Press doesn't always get the cover designs right, in my opinion, but this one is very well done. I, I happen to like this one an awful lot. This is an ad about two adventurers who travel to a lost world and meet a civilization. A lost world is a civilization that's been cut off from the modern world. You see, it's, it's lost. And they run into she who must be obeyed, who's a tremendously interesting character because she is immortal and she's a magician. She has magical powers. And she recognizes one of these adventurers as a reincarnation of her former lover. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in this book. It is a brilliant lost world adventure. Does it break away from any stereotypes? Not much, except to say that it is interesting that in the Victorian era when this was written, there is such a powerful female character. This woman is terrifying and she is very powerful. She dominates this whole story as she would. She is she who must be obeyed. And it's interesting that you would have such a character written at this time. And so if it breaks any new ground or moves away from any kind of stereotypes, I guess it is that in that it does have a very, very strong female character, to, to say the least. And it's a, it's a fascinating character. She's really interesting. She's a really interesting character. She's not a one-dimensional villain, for example, at all. She's a very sympathetic character and also terrifying. And her motives are a bit more complex than might be seen, than you might think at first. There, there's a lot going on in this book, and it's fascinating on a lot of levels. And I do highly recommend this book. Uh, it's fun and it's interesting. She, she, who must be obeyed. And this beautiful Easton Press edition, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with this edition. So the next one I'm going to be talking about, a lost world adventure just called The Lost World. And this one was actually kind of late in the Lost World genre. This one was written, or published anyway, in 1912. So it was published the same year Edgar Rice Burroughs uh, published A Princess of Mars, for example. However, it was tremendously influential, even though it's a later Lost World adventure written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who had written a ton of books by this point. And he introduced a new character in this one, a new recurring character called Professor Challenger, who is a professor who's just this big, grumpy guy who's extremely grumpy and violent. Not a guy you'd particularly want to hang out with. Not a guy that's, you know, yeah, not a guy you'd want to hang out with at all, actually. And so it's not a character that's at the level of Sherlock Holmes in my opinion. Although he has been pretty popular over the years, Professor Challenger. He is always getting himself into adventures of one sort or another. And this was his first adventure where he, a journalist and a big game hunter, they all go off to a, lo a literal lost world where dinosaurs still roam. And that is that's the thing that this book, The Lost World, is known for, is that it is a Lost World Adventures 
where these adventurers have to deal with dinosaurs, which is, you know, kind of exciting. And of course, this influenced everything, including Jurassic Park and its sequel, The Lost World. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty obvious influence. And it's a very popular book. And there were a few different choices for this book that I could have, that I could have gone with. And I decided to go with a, a Folio Society edition, but it's not the more recent Folio Society edition. I wanted the older one, and, and so I got the older one, and that is this edition right here. I, I, there, there's a reason I like this one, and yeah, so I got this one. It's not in perfect shape because it is older. The book is in perfect shape, but the box that the book goes into has some wear. You know, but the box, after all, is just to keep shelfware from the book itself, which is in really good shape, considering that it's an older book. That is the little cover design it's got on the front on the front of the book. Uh, it's got this old card that the folio books used to have. Uh, let me find the year. Yeah, this is from 1977. So. This is the Folio Society edition of The Lost World from 1977, which I really like uh, because it's very, it's very 1970s, <laughs> as well as being, you know, from 1912. So the thing I like about it are the weird doctored photos <laughs> that you'll find in this edition from the Folio Society. It's got a bunch of weird illustrations and photos that are just, they're just odd. And I really like, I just really like them for some reason. The book, of course, it's a Folio Society edition. So it's still, it still has snow white pages. This thing could have been printed yesterday. And it's in splendid shape, um, really nice shape. But this is one of those photographs that I was talking about uh, that you'll find throughout this volume where you have this guy there who is standing in for one of the characters looking at this drawing of a stegosaurus. So it's a really, really nicely printed edition with a bunch of kind of those odd illustrations. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. <laughs> Just these very strange kind of doctored artsy photographs that you'll see. And there is at least a couple in here that have dinosaurs. So let me see if I could find those. That's what we're here for, you know, in The Lost World, is it's the dinosaurs. Oh yeah, so here's a paradoxical. There we go. So, so yeah, as you can see, stunningly realistic uh, illustrations. They're not at all. And that's, that is, I, I have to admit, one of the things I kind of like about it. And then it just has the drawings of the dinosaurs, like that's just a dinosaur drawing there. But it's just, there's something about this kind of, this kind of thing where this edition is very much of its time when it was printed. And yet at the same time, there's something about it that is kind of timeless. And I think the same can be said of the story itself. It is very much of its time. Uh, you couldn't have written this too much later than when it was written, 1912. It actually feels like an earlier story than that. And at the same, at the same time, the adventure itself is kind of a timeless adventure. You can get just invol as involved in it now as its original readers were involved in it. Uh, it's, it's that kind of book. It's a really good book, and I do highly recommend it. So there you go. Two exciting Lost World adventures. Two of my favorite books of all time in two editions, which I really, really, really like. And now, you know, I'll, I'll totally get on, you know, unloading those other editions I have of, that, of these books lying around. I'm totally going to do that. I, 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 I swear it. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.